Yeah. Jimmy, is that you? Yeah, I'm right here behind the door in the bedroom. Jimmy, what happened? Well, I think my voice changed. But I'm gonna be a freshman next year. Whoa. But... Wow, Jimmy. Time really does fly. Okay, like, okay. See ya. Okay. <laughs> I got a call, so. And step away from the door. <laughs> okay, Jimmy. Bye. Wow. Beautiful. Hey, everybody. Oh, yes! Oh, no! <laughs> Gosh. Wow. Yes. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Paid Search Podcast. Podcast about Google Ads and digital marketing. My name is Jason Rothman. As always, I'm joined by the great Chris Schaefer. And we're not on video this week, but Chris, I don't even have to ask you how you're doing because you, you're looking strong. I'll put it that way. <laughs> you were mentioning CrossFit before the show, mm -hmm, back mm -hmm. at it. And um, am I right in that judgment there? Uh, have things picked up in terms of your CrossFit activity? Are you feeling strong and all that kind of stuff? I am. Yeah, it's it's good to be healthy again. You know, quarantine is quarantine's rough. You know, it, they wanted to keep us safe, but quarantine was going to kill me. Uh, but yeah, it's good. It's it's good <laughs> to be back on macros. You know pumping some some iron and getting my my guns back out into the light you know so it's it's good um how many times a week you are you uh working out do you oh, do crossfit uh f five Lift. days a week. five days a week which is do not dumbbells that much play five days five days a week really yeah it's not that much a lot of people go like six or seven but yeah does it not give your body time to recover your muscles? You change up, you change up the. Or do movements. you guys just go until you get life life ending injuries? And right, you totally <laughs> disable is, yourself yeah, after I mean, the age of fifty. You don't. Is that quit. how you guys do it? Yeah, you don't quit until your spine snaps from the weight on your back. You do, you know, you, you do that one last uh, back squat, and you hear that snap. You say, and then and then everybody salutes, and then uh, that guy's done with CrossFit. You know, do you do you stretch or? Oh, yes. Warm up or anything like that. Cool yeah. down. The, Do you the really? idea, the ideas that you have about what CrossFit is like, it's always so funny. Because <laughs> ever since I've told you that I did CrossFit, you're like, "That is so unhealthy. That is so dangerous." <laughs> of course, we stretch. We do like 15 minutes of stretching, and we do a tremendous amount of prep work to get us and build up to the weights and stuff. Yeah, it's. Is there anywhere in your CrossFit area where? You have a nice big mirror so someone can check themselves out. <laughs> no. And then you have a row of dumbbells and someone does curls. Is that there acceptable are, behavior? No, there are no mirrors. There is nothing but a giant fan in the middle of a square warehouse building with no AC and giant garage doors and a rubber floor to absorb all the blood, sweat, and tears. That's it. And you never like put your one knee up on a bench and the other one on standing straight up, and then you lift your your elbow up, and then you right. do a fly tricep, yeah, the, the tricep, tricep workout. with a nice ten pound dumbbell in the mirror ten. for for ten reps, and then you switch sides, okay, and you do it with but, the other side ten yep. to work that tricep muscle. Do yep. you never do that? Um, yes, but I mean, when when there's a specific tricep day movement, but usually there's fifteen other things involved with it. But yeah, but you don't do one knee on bench flies for triceps yeah i can say yes we definitely have done that multiple times in my years of crossfit yes so do you do that with the mirror i just don't have a mirror that's the only that's the only thing i that's do. the only thing is tricep <laughs> so you flies, have incredibly yeah. strong triceps you're, yep. you're wow but you're still doing 10 you said 10 pounds i'm a little worried I feel like you 10 should 10 pounds 10 reps so 10 pounds 10 reps okay that's all right well hey you gotta start somewhere that's good. Yeah, to be honest, Chris, I I burnt I burnt myself out before the show talking about the things we <laughs> talked about. So yeah, we you, we spent. Like, want to take it from here? I'm yeah. going to go get some nuts and some <laughs> chocolate and kind of regroup. So. Guys, I'm going to tell you how to work out your Google Ads muscle. Right? You want to do some bench flies and get pumped digitally 
Optio, Optio, O-P-T-E-O dot com slash PSP2. I give you that special URL because for the listeners of this show, you can get an eight-week free trial. That is double the time that all those other guys get. You go to their normal website, and it's just going to say, start a free 30-day trial. But I'm going to tell you the secret. You can get an eight-week free trial by clicking on the chat box at the bottom right and saying, hey, can I get the eight-week free trial? I listen to the Paid Search Podcast. They're going to give that special to... Now, the reason we want you to do that, you can you can still do the 30-day, but the reason we like it is because of this. Freelancers out there like me and Jason, agencies out there, people that are running their own campaigns themselves, this gets you through two months, two cycles to see how things work. You'll be able to compare. You'll get into the swing of things. You'll see why this tool makes working with Google Ads easier. It's the smarter way to manage your Google Ads account. So try it for eight weeks. You're going to like it. Every week, I tell you guys about all the really cool features. So I know you guys know because you tell us. It's a lot of you guys that have tried it out and are current users of it, and you really enjoy it. So for those who haven't tried it yet, optio.com slash PSP2. All right. Thanks, Chris. I was able to Regroup there, get some energy. Good. And uh, your chocolate we're and about nuts. About to get it on. Got chocolate, got some nuts. And um, Chris, today we're doing a QA. Mm-hmm. We love answering our listeners' questions about Google Ads. Got a lot of business, career related Google Ads questions. And we're going to answer those on the Patreon show, the after show we do every week, every single week. Go to paidsearchpodcast.com, click on the Patreon banner. And you can sign up just $2 a month. And we do that every week, the after show, and talk a little business. And then also, if you want to send us a question about Google Ads, client question, strategy question, anything, um, go to the contact page on paidsearchpodcast.com. Send us in your questions. We group them together, and then we do a Q&A show um, every few weeks. So that's what we're doing today. And first, Chris, I want to Read our five-star review of the week. comes from Reza oh, in Canada. Reviews are back. I wasn't ready for that. Yeah, reviews oh, are back. I'm excited. Five stars. Don't miss it. You are unbelievable both. Keep it up. Wow. Hey, it's like five words. That's all I needed. Jason, I, I, you know, I was ready to retire, but this encouraging message, I'm ready to go. I love it. Five-star review couple words, that's all I need to pump me up. Okay, so thanks for the review. You guys uh, can hear your own five-star review on the show by going to iTunes and telling us how great we are. Let's go to the first question. Neil from Calgary in Canada. What What is AB? What does that stand for? Um, I forgot. Alberta. Cal- Alberta, that's it. Thank you. The province. <clears throat> yeah. Hey guys, I really like this one. The first line's like one of my favorite opening lines. Hey guys, short time listener, long time troll. Love the podcast. <laughs> Love Jimmy. <laughs> so thanks, thanks. I, pr- I appreciate that. I'm gonna gonna be a freshman next year, Neil. So wow. it's gonna be cool. I'll he's, see you in the halls. Dude. He's, see you in the halls. He's growing up. He's such a big boy now. All right. So this is a question. It says question for you. Right after he says, "Love Jimmy." So I assume this is for Jimmy. I don't know if Jimmy knows anything about Google Ads, but if you started a campaign in a highly competitive market and realized after a week of manual CPC that enhanced bidding brought you all the way up to $15 to $30 clicks, okay? You're paying $15 to $30 per click. And the corresponding high daily budget that's required to do that, where would you go from there? How would you approach things knowing you need to spend upwards of $6,000 a month right off the bat to get in the game? All right. So he, he says, looking forward to hearing you argue about it. And I have tons of thoughts, but would love to hear yours first. So, Jason, let's argue. Yeah, I'm making some notes here. Very interesting question. Oh. So... You're doing, all, you're doing the math, guess, aren't you? You're figuring out how many clicks he thinks he needs a day is what you're reverse engineering here. Oh, no, no, no. We're far from that step here. I So I heard in there, I heard questions about 
enhanced CPC on manual bidding. Mm -hmm. I heard questions about how do you know what to bid? Mm -hmm. I heard questions about how do you judge where you're at and then know where to go? And then if you need to spend your budget, how do you do that? So a lot of different ways we could go with this. The first thing that caught my ear was the phrase after a week of manual CPC. Mm. Bidding. After a week. Mm, that's a good and point. That's a good point. I don't know. Every every day in the morning I go out, I get my paper like Tony Soprano, <laughs> and I never know what day Cigar. the guy dressed in all black on the speed bike motorcycle is going to come in with a silencer. Oh, and that's it for spoilers. the great Jason Rothman in the Paid Search Podcast. Boop. And then I just <laughs> drop there. Because I talk about ramp up, Chris, and I don't know if ramp up is something that I should talk about because no one else seems to talk about it. But I, if you just Google ramp up as real as Google ads, you'll see my obituary. <laughs> maybe, maybe one day, Chris. I don't know if I don't know if it's something I should discuss. But it's like to me, ramp up is real. I'm dealing with the client right now. Sure, we just launched, and and I used to say a few days. I used to say turning on an old car in winter and warming it up, and mm -hmm. feel looks like a light switch, but it's really like the old car in winter. Now I'm saying. It's like waking up an old man in winter. Oh, wow. He's got to wake up. It's getting worse. Shuffle over to the bathroom. Oh, wow. Pee for about <laughs> 3.5 seconds. And moan. Stand there after he pees for 3.5 seconds <laughs> for another 30 seconds. Because he still right. feels like he needs to pee, but he doesn't. <laughs> That's like an old age thing. So I'm told. So I'm told. Right. You're very young. Then he shuffles over to the kitchen. Uh-huh. Eats his... Uh, wow. Wow. Cold cereal. Haven't even gotten to the car yet. Oh, we're far from the car. <laughs> oh, boy. We might Goes over to, I'm going to speed it up a little. Heads back to the bedroom. <laughs> takes a shower, slips, breaks his hip. Oh, wow. No, never going to make it. Goes to the hospital. <laughs> and we're, we're, we're trying to we're trying to get to the car. We're trying so to get to the old, car. An old guy the, can warm up the old car. The illustration is the well, car we're, now we got on. Now we got to do rehab. Now we got to do a hip replacement. <laughs> oh, my gosh. He never even so got two to the years car. go by. He rehabs. He's got a hip replacement. Wakes up in the morning one day. Wow. Pees for three point five seconds. Right. Mm -hmm. Stands there for Additional another thirty because he seconds. feels like he needs to pee, right. but he doesn't. He realizes that. Shuffles over to the kitchen, eats his cold cereal, heads back. Shower successfully. Oh, this oh thank goodness. Whew. Gets dressed. Okay. Then gets in his old car in winter. Turns the ignition on in the driveway and uh, it warms up. That is my new definition of ramp up. And new clients, when I'm wow. selling them on the phone, you tell them I go story? through that whole process and they love it. Yeah, they love it. They love it. They're like, uh, this is a weird guy I just called, but I like he him. seems to have a good reputation. He was recommended strongly. <laughs> so that's what it's like now, Chris. The ramp up, I, basically what I'm trying to say, and maybe what I could have said initially, is I've kind of extended maybe. my, oh, it's a few days to... More like, don't let's not talk about it for 30 days. Right. And now I'm all about soft launches and mm -hmm. just turning it on yep. and getting things going and not expecting anything. So the first thing that caught my ear was after a week. And you know what, young man? After a week, you don't know anything. Yeah. Like, you don't know You're anything. You're a baby so boy. There, you got you to gotta respect the ramp up. You could be bidding way more than it takes to show up number one all the time. And you may not because... Of ramp up. And even if you do your preview tool or you search for yourself, you may see yourself there, but other people may not. So the ramp up is real. And I would say don't even don't even judge these cost per click results or think you're going to be able to control your results in terms of spending your full budget for 30 days. Give yourself some time. Now, now that you're past that, the next thing I heard, Chris, was enhanced cost per click. Yeah. And you know that Cynthia and I just got married recently. So really, I heard yeah, rumors. Yeah. Congrats, yeah. congratulations! I can say, and wife I was now. like, okay, wife, yes, yes. And I'm like, hey, wife, there you go. Can I go out and just cheat a little bit? <laughs> and she's go? not cool with that. And I'm like, <laughs> what? And I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna define what that means. But I'm like, I, I just want to cheat a little bit. Yeah. And she says no. And to me, that's what enhanced cost per click is. <laughs> just cheating. It's just cheating a little bit. So <laughs> if you're going to do, I'll tell you, I'll put it this way. I take words literally and I listen to people uh -huh. and I read things uh -huh. and then I actually absorb them. So when I hear about enhanced cost per click and they go, 
yeah, it's manual bids, but we're going to change your bid amount up or down to anything. Yeah. Based right. on if we think it's likely or not to become a conversion. Mm-hmm. I actually take that literally and I go, wait a second, that doesn't sound like manual bidding anymore. Right. That sounds like automated bidding. Mm-hmm. So why, so if you're going to, you're cheating a little. And so, cause cheating a little is cheating all the way, apparently mm-hmm. in my marriage. Wow. So learn that the hard way. You know what I'm saying, Chris? Cheating a little is cheating the full way. So if you're going to cheat a little with EC, ECPC, you're cheating all the way. And it's no longer manual bidding. That's the second thing that caught my ear. Wow. That is, I don't think I've ever heard you make such a stance because I'm kind of a fan of ECPC for most campaigns. Now, I mean, we'd have to talk about when to use it and our thoughts on it. Maybe that's a whole topic, but that's really interesting. I like that. Well, my interpretation I retired is- from ECPC a few months ago. I retired from it. Wow. But if I'm doing manual we bids, have I'm not doing talked manual about bids. that. We have we should talk about that. Write that write that down, uh intern. Well the thing I, I, I got hung up on is this. Uh, and I'll read the the question from Neil. He said, How would you approach things knowing you need to spend? I'm gonna focus on these words. Imagine they're italicized. Knowing you need to spend upwards of six thousand a month. Okay, I say that with some enthusiasm because I don't need to do anything. I don't know anything. And I absolutely take offense, Neil. I I'm waiting for your apology because just because something is fifteen to thirty dollars per click, and as Jason described, that may be overspending already, but just because CPC is a certain thing, that does not determine what my budget must be. Google Ads does one thing really well. It allows traffic to be sent to one URL based on the criteria you've given it. If you have told Google Ads you want this traffic, why do you think that you're going to be more successful just because you send 10,000 of those traffic versus 10 of those traffic, right? The measure of the quality should be the same. It's the volume of the traffic that would change by the budget. So just because the clicks are $15 or $30 per click doesn't mean you have to spend a certain amount to be competitive. You can still take your knife and just cut off a little sliver of that qualified traffic. And you still get, it's still a good piece of traffic. You just don't get a whole slice of the cake. Wow. Does any does anyone have a tissue that was so beautiful? That that theory, that theoretical nonsense, what? that purity. Oh, oh come nonsense. on. Oh, that was that so, is so beautiful. True. Okay. That, that perfect world of where you actually spend money based on results and let the results dictate. Come on, Chris, you've worked for agencies. Hey, <laughs> oh. uh, we got to spend this budget. Oh. We got to spend the budget. Or I'm going to, like, that's, you got to spend the budget. We got to spend just, the budget. That's so, just dirty. I mean... Well, it happens. It's a dirty world. It I happens. like Neil. So, I like Neil, and and Canada's a, a nice place, not the best. What but- does Canada have to do to lose its nice reputation? Because I feel like everybody, the first thing they think when they hear Canada is nice. So how many horrible things, how many wars do they have in them? Unprovoked wars until we start <laughs> until saying, we start saying they're nice. nice. Yeah, it's true. I don't know. That's a great it's question. Maybe two and a half. Be the First sh- one was debatable. Then they do it again, and you're like, "Oh my god, they did it they again!" Did it again. <laughs> something's started, in the something's in the maple syrup. Bay. Another war. They're still nice, though. Okay, yeah, they're still nice. The I, okay, they you're right. Nice, you're yeah. right. Uh, I so taking, I mean, sometimes you have to spend the budget, Chris. Taking yeah. out, no, I mean, but see, he said, well, sometimes clients, sometimes clients will contact you and be like, "Hey, dude, our budget is a thousand dollars a month. I really want to spend that on Google Ads. We're only spending two hundred a month." hypothetical numbers but come on like i i mean i have an answer for it my, well my answer is this at the beginning of a campaign volume is important and sampling different types of traffic is important so my short answer is this pull down the bids spend whatever your budget is and try and get the bids as low as you can until you blow the entire budget per day on as low a a CPC as you can get. You're going to sample as much of the market as you can. Who cares if you're, you know, not showing in third, fourth, fifth, sixth position. You just have to get the traffic. If you're getting the clicks and you're spending the money and you're getting a $2 CPC, that's great. Find the winners out of those super cheap traffics, then push the bids up. I mean, that's that's the idea. I mean, so the whole budget... My my advice, Chris, on how how I know what 
knowing what to bid and or knowing how to spend more of your budget, it all comes down to the impression share columns. So you've got absolute top impression share, number one position, and then top impression share above organic on the keywords. And you can look at your bids and look at your performance of your keywords and go, okay, my top impression share is only 50%. I have a lot of room to increase my bids and I can show up higher and spend more budget. Um, and I know that it would take a higher bid to be more competitive. So that'll give you data. And then of course, impression share with budget and knowing and ad rank and knowing what percent of the market you're showing up on. So I would let those columns guide how much you want to bid to accomplish whatever goals you have. Spending the budget or getting the, a certain cost per click, let those columns guide you. The only thing I would add, though, is during that ramp up the first month, don't pay too much attention to those columns. Just kind of start feeling your way out. But um, it's definitely hard to do if you if you got to kind of like produce within one month just the way the system works. I would take it easy, let things mature. And then once you're out of that little ramp up phase and you're confident about the data you're getting there, focus on those impression share columns. All right. You want to read the next one from Switzerland? Yeah, Nas from Switzerland. Hi guys, thanks so much for answering my question this week about negative list. Much appreciated. I had another question. Could you please walk us through the whole... Oh, this is, this is, I see what you did with the order here, Chris. Uh -huh. Wow. You're yeah. very, yes, very skilled producer here. I had another question. Could you please walk us through the whole quote manual CPC quote concept process? I keep hearing about it from you and other ad special. I don't think you hear about it from anybody mm -hmm. else. No, uh, that would surprise me. He I means thought I was me the last one. And you <laughs> as the, as in the other. <laughs> But I really wonder how it works step by step. Do you choose a starting CPC, let's say $1.50 per click, and then you check the keyword performance manually and either increase or decrease the keyword level bids with time based on the data? Or what are the exact steps you guys take when going with manual CPC? Thank you in advance, and thanks for everything you do for us. So, Chris, you get a new account. And let's not play the game of you already have this industry a lot of times and you already know what the mm. cost per click is. Right. Assume you're seriously, blind. seriously, totally what do blind. you do? So you have a new industry and let's say it's a, have you, have you ever done a hair salon? Yeah. How about sweaters yeah. for kittens? Kitten sweaters. Never done that. No, I don't like the e-commerce. Oh. Have you ever done portable photo booth rental? Yes. I can do this all day, Jason. Uh, I'm going to find it. Okay. okay. Keep maybe going. you can, maybe you can't. <laughs> Keep maybe going. you can, maybe you can't. Okay. Have you ever done property management? You mean like commercial property management? Leasing? Yes. I have one now. Have one now. <laughs> Working on a brand new one. Right? Have you ever done have you ever done a warehouse staffing agency for warehouse jobs? No. Wow. That there you well, go. Well, there you go. That is specific. Wow. So you're you're a staffing agency, you you specialize in warehouse jobs and you want to get in front of people who are seeking warehouse jobs and get them in your system, get those leads and then get them in your staffing agency and you can okay. assign them to the different clients you work with that mm. take your employees as their staffers. So you're going to have keywords like warehouse jobs near me, warehouse jobs Miami. Mm -hmm. Okay. What w literally what do you do when you set your bids? Okay. So Nas, uh, here, here's my formula. Jason will lay out his. I think they'll be close to the same, but I think the, the difference between them will kind of create the variety here that, that could be useful to you. What I do is, as Jason described, people will be searching in different ways. Some people will search warehouse jobs. Some people will search slightly different. Some people might use uh, you know, industry jobs or or stocking jobs. I mean, I, I like Jason said, I haven't worked in the industry, but there will always be some differing language. They won't always use warehouse. So what I do is I figure out what those are. What are those other similes that align with warehouse? I put those into different ad groups, assuming they're quite different. And those are probably going to be slightly different on the precision of the keyword. Warehouse is great. Maybe that's my best low funnel search. Warehouse jobs near me is probably one of my best keywords because it's a great search. Another one that may not be quite so good is 
stocking job near me, you know, stock jobs or, you know, how to, you know, stuff like that. Not quite as valuable. I'm not really sure what they mean. Do they mean like stock market kind of job or what? But anyway, I put all those in ad groups and I bid them according to the value. Highest value gets the highest bid. Lowest value gets the lowest bid. So warehouse job might get the highest bid. I might put uh, $2 on it. Stop. Stop. Okay. Stop. Thank you. You're right. Where do you come Where up with I, that $2? Out of, out of my head. Literally, I, I just pick something that seems kind of low. So are you confident without ever working in that industry that a warehouse job cost per click would be under $100 per click to be competitive at the top of the page there? I'm not concerned about top of the page. I'm not concerned with hitting first position or second or even ranking above organic at the beginning. The The reason I picked the CPC is to just... You didn't, you didn't flow, you didn't flow with what was in my brain. You didn't mind read. Oh. Okay. And then as a podcast partner, I'm going to need you to mind read a right. little bit better. Oh, sorry, sir. Yeah. Sorry. But the point I was trying to make, Chris, is you did pick $2. Yeah. And I don't care if you're not trying to show up at the top or whatever, you pick something. Uh-huh. And so why didn't you pick a hundred dollars? Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. Because intuitively you I know you that knew the that, value of. No, no one, no one is. Yeah. So if they book a. If a staffing agency books a warehouse job and that warehouse worker gets paid $3,000 a month and the staffing agency gets 10% of that for the first three months, that's $900. You can't be paying $100 per click Per click, yeah. when the conversion rate on a lead is going to be 10%. And then the amount of those leads that actually turn into people that get jobs is a fraction of that. And then the amount of people that actually last three months, so you get your full payment, is a fraction of that. It can't be $100. So intuitively... You kind of knew that and you did it intuitively because you're a great AdWords manager. And for the newer people who are newer to this out there, I would say when you're trying to come up with that first thing, think about the industry. Think about the money involved in the industry. If you're selling T-shirts, you sell T-shirts for $10. Well, you're not going to be paying $10 a click when not every click buys a T-shirt. So you can kind of work backwards from that. Chris, in your process... Do you use the keyword planner? Do you look for blogs on the standard cost per click for an industry when you haven't worked in it? Mm. Or is everything you do this intuitive, I just want to start and get data and do a ballpark that seems somewhat in the ballpark? Is it all intuitive at this point for you? Uh, yeah, intu- I, I think what you said, it's hard for some people to, to wrap their brains about around what you said, but what you said is exactly right. Um so, that, so one last thing I'll say is when you pick those bids intuitively based on luck, as I would say, put them at the ad group level. Each ad group has, you know, 5, 10, 15 keywords in it to start off with. I will not talk about match type and all that. You're, you're talking about bids, so I'm not going to go into all that. But they all, all those are at the same level of quality. They all say the word warehouse. They all are the same, you know, level of the funnel different match types, stuff like that. You put $2 on that ad group and then a couple more ad groups, blah, 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 all the way down to the least value, which has a dollar, maybe 50 cents, something like that, because there will be a lot of volume on searches that have less, if if they have less value, typically they're going to be more volume. So you need to pay less per click because you don't want to blow your budget on something that's just like stock jobs, you know, things like that. So that's what it looks like. So you like the intuitive, let me just try something that seems in the somewhat ballpark. If it's way too high, I'll find out quickly. I'll lower it. If it's way too low, I'll find out quickly. I'll raise it. And you don't use the keyword planner. You don't search on blogs for stuff. No. That's your process. Literally within, you know, literally within 24 hours, I'll be able to log back in and look at that campaign and look at the positions the position metrics, the impression share above top organic, impression share. top impression share, absolute, absolute top. top impression. If, if I see a whole bunch of absolute tops where I'm getting like 75% absolute top, holy cow, I'm dropping that bid immediately. I'm going down to 50 cents. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to cut that bid by a, by 75%. So, um, it's all about, like I said, if I have money to spend, I'm going to get as cheap as I can. Just like I said, with Neil's question, cheap as I can until I find the value, then I start piecemealing it up until I can find, you know, where the, where the real case is. Now, the ramp up can kind of distort your ability to read that data. 
Um, but at the same time, you will get some data and you should have some kind of feel. I'm the same way, Chris. I do it on feel. I do it on just trying something out that seems somewhat reasonable based on the economics of the industry. And you know what? Just like you, I judge the data day by day and I go up or down from that. And here's the thing. You can't go wrong starting too low because if you start too low, you're not going to get a bunch of expensive clicks. You're just not going to get good volume. You may not even get impressions because you're too low, but you can always just keep raising it and you just raise it. And uh, I kind of like the mindset of going from low to high just to, as kind of an insurance policy to protect the money there, you know, and make sure you don't go crazy and like spend too much money too quickly. If you don't have that intuitive feel, I would Google the industry, see if you can find out any information out there. And you can also try the keyword planner. But I got to say, I like our yeah. I like our system. And you can protect yourself with the trying to do it intuitively system by starting low and just going up. All right. Next question is from Isam. Isam is from Malaysia. Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Thank you. Malaysia. I was going to stick with Malaysia, but uh, can't say I know where that is. At least it's the city, I mean. Hello, Jason and Chris. Oh, Jason and Chris. This guy's your, he's your fan, Jason. He puts you first. First, love your podcast. For the past two months, I've been listening to your podcast on my way driving to work, and I can say I arrive at my office every day with at least one new knowledge. I learned a lot from you guys, so keep doing what you're what you're doing. I just became a patron today. Oh, thank you, Isam. So proceed to the question. In Malaysia, most people are bilingual. Some even know more than two languages and very comfortable talking in English and Malay. When it comes to business, almost everyone will use English for website and ads. My question is, when building new Google search campaigns for new clients who never use Google ads before, should I start by focusing on one language or having two different ad groups for each language? Oh, okay. I, I think I already know where this is headed. I'm thinking both ad groups will target the same keyword and have the same ad copy, but just in different languages. Any thought on this, Jason? So I'm assuming he's talking about in Malaysia. Yes. And yes. where... There's two common languages, mm -hmm. English and Malay. Someone who speaks both of them, I kind of have some experience in this field. There's two parts of locations that we have to talk about, or languages, excuse me. There's the keywords and the ads, and then there's also the campaign setting, language settings. And as you and I used to understand it, the language settings, where in the settings you can do all languages or you can do... English or Malay or multiple languages instead of all of them or all of them. It used to be based on the browser setting or something like that mm -hmm. back in the day. And then we were saying that and then we looked it up and they had switched that. So I just went into a Google ads account and it says language targeting allows you to restrict where your ads can appear based on the user's language setting and language of the site. I thought something had changed here, Chris, about language targeting Shows, lets you target your ads to potential customers who use Google products and third-party websites based on the language those customers understand. How Google ads to text languages on the search network, uh, a variety of signals to understand which language the user knows. So I'm pretty sure, and now they're talking about machine learning algorithms and language signals. I'm pretty sure, Chris, we used to say it was based on the browser, browser setting. Yeah. And that has basically been updated to Google takes in a bunch of signals and just decides, decides what that yeah. user you speak languages this. they can speak, including if they can speak multiple. So they may see someone do searches in Spanish and searches in English, browse English websites, browse Spanish websites, and determine that that person speaks English and Spanish. And so if you check English, they'll show up. Or if you only check Spanish, they'll show up as well. Right. Yep. So it's based on the person, I think is what's changed. So who you want to show your ads to, no matter what your keywords are, you can select that as language. And you and I always do all languages because typically. If, if, if we have, typically, yeah, if we have a keyword and the keywords in English and our keywords are in English. And so that means we're basically 
trying to get in front of people who can understand English enough to type it and search and see ads and click on them. We're going to do all languages because if we only limit it to, to English, and this is now we're going to do the keywords, someone who Google deems is a French speaker and not an English speaker, if they do a search in English for our keyword, they're not going to see our ad, even though they did the search in English. So now it comes down to your keywords. And as I understand it, Chris, and I'm pretty sure I'm right about this. If someone does a search for a keyword in Melee and you have the actual Melee keyword there in Melee, your ad will show up. If you want someone to be able to see your ad when they do an English keyword search, you got to have that keyword in English as well. So if you're in a situation like Malaysia where everybody speaks two languages and you have a keyword like moving companies near me, you could have Melee keywords and English keywords, movers near me in the same ad group. And then you could have only ads in Melee or only ads in English, whatever you prefer, or both and see how they perform. But it all comes down to, you know, your keyword. If if you have an English keyword, they have to search that English keyword to, to be able to see your ad. If you have a Melee keyword, they have to search the Melee keyword to see your ad. And then based on your language settings, you can potentially block some people off if you limit it to only certain languages because Google might think they're a French speaker only, but then they might do that search in English and your ad won't be there because you have it set to English only. So that's why mm -hmm. I like all languages on the setting. Yeah, that's a good point. Because what do you think about that, Chris? That, I mean, that's a big deal because uh, we live in a uh, post-audience world where Google makes assumptions about people based on their activity. So no longer is it a browser determination where someone makes a decision and Google reads that decision in their browser setting, but instead Google's making assumptions on the age of the person, their income, gender, all that kind of stuff. Google makes assumptions. Interest. Uh, yeah, what their hobbies are, whether they have a kid, how old the kid is. Whether they have a... What they're searching for in life at that moment in terms of in the market for things. If they're married or not, if they're getting married soon, there's so many things that Google will... If will they travel. live in a city or if they happen to be there quite a bit. Traveling. Yep. All kinds of stuff. So so because of that, I, yeah, I, I, I completely agree. And uh, so beyond that, the only thing I would say is um, I think the only thing that to consider beyond that is give the user the best experience they can. If they search in a certain language, give them that language. So that's why I think put one language in one ad group and another language in an ad, another ad group. I don't think there's any reason to have different campaigns because like Jason said, just choose all languages. But if you have Malay in, in one ad group and English in another, have you know the same kind of keywords, but you know, you're know you essentially going to just double every English ad group with another Malay ad group and... Um, you know, uh, give them Malay ad copy and English ad copy uh, for for each of them. Yo hablo español, mi esposa habla español, mi hijo habla español y inglés. I'm fluent in Spanish. Wow. And I run a lot of Spanish campaigns where you have Spanish keywords and Spanish ads. Fluent? Si. Wow. Tu camiseta es rojo. You know, I'm not so sure because every word I hear you say in Spanish, I learned in my ninth grade Spanish class, and I'm following you, and I wouldn't say I'm fluent. Okay. Donde esta uh -huh. mi boleta? <laughs> okay. What did I say? Where's my bullet? Donde esta bullet? mi boleta? Where's my bullet? No. I don't know what that is. No. Okay. I right. I understood 90% of what you said except for the last word. Where is my? Well, the, the, the languages are, are close. It's a very... It's it's a very structural language that I find easy to learn okay. because you have the different verb tenses or the different way of speaking about things, about yourself, about to directly to another person, about someone, about us, or about a group of people, the structure of the different verbs, and then it's all just nouns from there. Okay. Well. Give me something to say. Optio. Can you say that in Spanish? Optio? Mm-hmm. You just say it with a Spanish accent? Is that is that how it works? I'm just saying, Chris. <laughs> Optio is the tool that every one of you guys are missing. 
if you're trying to get more done. Listen, you only have 24 hours. Everybody has 24 hours, and you got to sleep a little bit of that. You want to get more done. And if you're a freelancer, you want to get more done in your day because the more you're able to do efficiently, the more time you have for additional clients, the more money you can make. You're an agency. You want to maximize your employees, make sure that they get the most done in the day and that they're doing a good job. I'll tell you one of the things that I'm working with some of my clients right now in consulting work is I'm trying to help them figure out a process to help with their employees so that their processes can be efficient and they can be thorough. Optio is the tool just for things like that, where they help you with processes. They help you with step-by-step and checking things. And the whole optimization process is built in. They can help you build new campaigns, do new keywords, ad copy, all those things. It's really great. You're going to like it. And as I said at the beginning, eight week free trial at opteo.com slash PSP2. And with that, we have some really, really interesting additional questions. And for those of you that would be interested in Optio, you, I think you can really do yourself a favor and jump into Patreon. So while you're signing up for Optio, go check out our Patreon where we discuss the business of Google Ads behind the scenes about, you know, for agencies and for freelancers. And we're a little more open about, you know, What do we do with clients? You know, how do you answer client questions? How do we address some drama? We have some drama from, I think it was, I think Dylan who uh, posted. uh, And we're going to have some Dylan drama. It'll be fun. So be sure and join us for that. Uh, If you don't want to, you're not interested, then we'll catch you next week.